Are you a bit self-conscious that you don't have the drawing skills to create amazing storyboards? Filmmaker Seth Worley shows how even stick figures can get the job done in building your story. For the full workshop, check out the link in the description. The thing about storyboards, they are, are like, storyboards are like swimsuits. Like, we all feel self-conscious about ours, about showing them to other people, but then when we see others, we're just like, oh cool, that person is also swimming. Like, we're not like, oh my god, they look terrible in that swimsuit. Like, very rarely are we actually give a crap what like, our friend looks like in a swimsuit. But we think everyone is judging us and how we look in it. Storyboards are the same way. Most directors cannot draw, but their storyboards get the job done. And there's even a value two stick figures. These are boards for a commercial that I just directed with um, friends of mine at Sandwich Video for an app called WAG, it's like Uber for dog walking. And these are my early storyboards. Ironically, funny enough, I think only two of these shots remained in the, uh, the, the shoot, just for time purposes, we had to consolidate uh, things. But like, this is like, <laughs> it's like a real legit commercial, like starring uh, celebrity Olivia Munn. And these are the images that I sent to the agency to like say what I was doing. And I felt like an idiot. But it, here are the things that it conveys. One, it conveys, I have an idea and a vision and I know what I'm doing and, and I'm going for something. I'm not just feeling it out. Like I have a plan. That alone is awesome and inspires confidence. Also, it keeps your client from giving you notes because they're not going to look at this and go, I wish, I wish the doorknob wasn't as big, or I wish, what if like, it's a stick figure. They're going to look at that and imagine the perfect version in their heads. And I have uh, agency, like, uh, creative agency friends who have told me like, yeah, we never deliver anything above a sketch to a client because then they have something to judge and to critique. But if it's just a sketch, all they can do is imagine what it's going to look like. And it will look like, you know, the, the, what they want it to look like. And so when you're drawing storyboards, like, it's great if your stuff looks like stick figures and looks uh, really gross. And it's also very, very normal. Because um, it, it, uh, it preserves the potential. That's really what it does. It, it conveys vision, but it preserves the potential of, pro of the project. And, you know, Freddie Wong, I've heard him, I did a panel with him a few years back, and he said this genius thing about how, when you're, he was talking about writing, but I think it's this way throughout the process, and I think of this, like, when you're writing, you are, and doing this, you were whittling down the infinite. You were like, uh, you're taking what could be anything and you're just step by step whittling it down to where it's, it's more and more specifically something and not all these other things. Um, and storyboarding like this is a, great, is a great way of preserving that potential, preserving that it could still be anything, but still doing productive work moving towards something specific. I happen to have a new notebook that we just released today called the Storyboard Notebook. We made specifically for this kind of thumbnail sketching. It's just page, it's just page spreads of these. You can organize them by sequence, by project. Uh, it has anamorphic guides. I have a little promo that we made. I'll just show it to you real quick. So like this is a thing that like I had for the longest time this little Muji made these little notebooks that had just squares in them. They were called like magazine sketchbooks or something and I honestly don't know what they were for. They were just boxes. And I, I was like I'm going to use them for storyboarding. And I used them and um, in the behind the scenes for one of my shorts, on an, uh, it was an episode of Film Ride I think, uh, um, it went on, it went up this little part where I'm like I use this Muji notebook and like people freaked out. And we're like where did you get that notebook? It's a notebook full of squares. I want it. I want to draw things in it. And so when we had some margin money left over from the Story Clock Notebook Kickstarter, we were like, first thing I said was like, we're making a storyboard notebook. Like, this is something that's very useful. And we have in here, we have like little things just to help you like, it's for sketching out. And the, the thing that I use it for is not, I don't sit down here and I'm like, here's what the scene's going to be in order. This is where I'm literally like, okay, in my head I have, I have this vision of this, like this shot, something where this is happening. I'm, it's like when you're dropping in like an idea pile, like in the story clock notebook, like when you're just getting the I loose ideas down on paper. 
by doing this, by just sketching them real quick, like I have this, maybe it can, I don't know if it, what it connects to, but I have an idea for this shot and for this shot. And you take a step back and you're like, oh, I think I have a sequence here. Like this can come first and this can come first. And you can order them up here, like, you know, for your own notes and stuff. And you can be like, and you can put little notes to yourself by checking like, okay, this is a shot that's probably on sticks. It might be on dolly or in gimbal or handheld. And maybe there are VFX involved. You can check those. And it's great because you don't, think, you may not think this has inherent value to you, like, but when you do this, you come back to it like a day later and you're like, oh my God, I have a rad scene on my hands. Like, this is going to be awesome. Like, or I ha like, I'm working towards something great. So like, this is not meant to be like, oh, here's my perfect crafted vision. Here we are. Really, like, storyboarding is for you to hone your vision and to organize your ideas just like when you're outlining and writing and structuring a story. You can take it a step further and you can animate your storyboards as well. Uh, they're called animatics. These are, sometimes they're called boardomatics. These are basically where you will animate your stick figures very crudely. Like Pixar uh, does animatic versions of their entire movie, um, several, several stages. So this I made in After Effects. Um, I drew these uh, in uh, 53's paper app, just drew little sketches and I brought them and After Effects, uh, you can, but it's easy, even easier if you use the app Procreate is a great app because uh, you can actually draw in layers. But you can bring it in After Effects and this is just very crude animation of like, it's mainly just like adding wiggle parameters to things and scaling things like per shot. But then my buddy Stu Mashowitz made this, oh here's an example, I did this for GoBag as well. Here's some comparison shots. Um, and these are really nice for, um, so what's interesting is you can draw storyboards and show them to your crew. I've had shoots where I go, so Chris, we're going to do this. And here's what the first shot looks like. He's like, okay, so you want a circle and a square in it. Perfect. Like, and I realize this looks like nothing to people. Like they're looking at this and it makes no sense. But storyboards make sense when they're juxtaposed to each other because then you have context and you're like, oh, that must be a head because it's turned here in this way. Um, they also make sense when you add little blurs and motion. Like in here, I have simulated depth of field in some of these shots uh, where like, oh, this thing back here is, 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 is out of focus, is blurred, this thing in the foreground is not. Like your brain starts to make sense of what you're looking at then. But then when you put it in motion, you can also, uh, it's great for, animatic is great for uh, confirming if you're doing a commercial especially or music video, confirming that your timing is gonna work, that the gags and the, and the coverage you have planned, that that timing is gonna work within the time. So it's great, agencies love to see this, you send them this, a 30 second spot, your boards, animated it. It looked like you spent money and time doing this, like animating these little things, but it's actually very, very simple to put one of these things together. This is a, a thing called a film team experiment that I made at Red Giant, um, involving a, a BB-8 3D model. Um, my friend Stu Mashowitz made these uh, presets at ProLoss.com called uh, Bordo. It's a, basically a, it's a plugin or script for After Effects that you drop your drawings onto a comp and you drop them on and it has preset uh, animations for like what it'll look like at the beginning of the frame and what it'll look like at the, end, at, at the beginning of the clip and what it'll look like at the end of the clip. And they automatically adjust when you stretch the clips. So it'll do automatic zooms or moves. You can uh, animate based on markers where you drop markers in on each of the clips and it will like use that as the endpoint for the motion. And what's even greater, the best part, it has preset camera shakes on it. So you can literally, it's set for like, he has ones that's, that's called like locked off with a little life. I mean, Stu's a filmmaker. He knows what looks you're going for and he's made these presets like that. And it has really cool uh, settings where if you have, so in your timeline, if you have this clip with Bordo on it and this clip with Bordo on it, one, if you overlap, it will automatically crossfade them uh, between the two without you doing anything. You can turn that on and off. But if you have a setting, you can click to where as long as one is above the other, it will strobe, like the top layer will strobe, so it will oscillate back and forth between the two layers, which is how you get these, I am driving or I am looking this way uh, kind of shots. So like you see BB-8, when he's, there's shots where he's moving around or dancing, that's from that oscillating strobe thing back and forth. Uh, very, very useful tool, very, not, and not expensive whatsoever. Uh, um, so I encourage you to check that out. Um, Here's, uh, here's a, an animatic I made. I'll show you just an example. Like here's what I made for a, yeah, you watch.
who knows what that last thing was? There are dots he's looking at. Cool. But if you know, if you're on my team, you know what that is because we're talking about it. We're planning. You know what happens in this spot. Um, but this clearly, I drew this on Notepad, like, and I literally took pictures with my iPhone and brought it into uh, Photoshop, cut them up, brought them in After Effects, and animated them. Um, it's like an afternoon. It took me to do that. Here's the final version. This is for a product called Red Giant Universe, which has now been out for several years, and it's a very cool plugin for motion graphics artists and editors. And the idea of that was to be as mysterious as possible with it. But what was helpful about having a little animatic was I was working with an actor who was not an actor. He was a friend of a friend. I was looking for someone who had a Norman Rockwell kind of a look, and like from a painting, not like of Norman Rockwell. Um, uh, get me Norman Rockwell! Um, but I wanted to, a way to explain to him kind of what we were doing. And I, as I'll explain in a second, like when you show up, when like it's really hard when you have this very clear vision to tell it to uh, someone who's doing a small part in like the project, like an actor, or whatever. Because like, you don't know how much context necessarily they really want or need to do their job, but you do want them to have an idea of what they want them to know what they're shooting, like, and they want to know what they're shooting. But there is such thing as over-explaining and telling them too much, and they just they. Their mind, just like you guys are doing right now, their minds shut off and they don't absorb anything because too much is being thrown at them. What these help because you can like say, hey, I'm shooting this promo. Uh, it has you and a truck driving up and seeing a thing in the sky. Here's kind of the, the tone I'm going for. People see it and they just get an idea for what you're shooting and it gets everybody on the same page with less talk from you, which is always beneficial. Was your mind blown with knowledge just like mine was? Check the links in the description for the full workshop and remember to subscribe to get more mind-blowing nuggets from professional filmmakers. And do share what your takeaways were in the comment section below. Go ahead, I'll wait.